Okay. Here we have what I think is the first exhibition devoted to our permanent collection of drawings. I don't know the, of another one so far. And part of that is because a lot of these are fairly recent. Um, and in fact, some of them are just in the past year. So, um, and there are a few more. That there were other things that could be in the show, but we kept it to, to this group for right now. Um, some of the things I'm thinking about drawing, well, you know basically what it is. It's taking a marker to usually a flat surface and using lines to describe something. Um, it can, but at the same time, in addition to just linear aspects, depending on your medium, you can indicate planes and atmosphere and value, shadow, tone, the things you can do really in any medium. But it's that the linear aspect is, is one of the defining points. Another defining aspect of it is the medium that is being employed. And typical drawing media include, of course, graphite, pen and ink, um, pastel, um, metal pencil. point. Colored pencil. Colored pencil, metal point. Um, those are the most typical. And we have examples of many of those techniques here. But what I like about this show is that there are also some very unusual techniques at being used to pr produce drawings. Um, take, <laughs> take um, what's his name? Mike Lyon, his John. Um, he has uh, developed over a very long period computer-aided drawing techniques that are based on computer programs so that he'll program in to a computer information about a portrait of John and come up with computer programs and he's also invented machines that can hold a stylus or a pen or a pencil and it's the machine and the program that produces the image. So when you get up close, you know, it's like the Chuck Close in a way, you know, the further away you are, the tighter it is and then as you get up you begin to realize that this is a very mechanical method of putting lines onto paper. And it almost looks like a, a topographical map. And that's a good point because he's using layers, maybe up to 14 layers of imagery, building one on top of the other to finally get the completed image that, that really pulls together and, and forms the, um, the personality of, of his sitter. Uh, and, I, and I've read through his thing, but it was difficult for me. <laughs> he uses a CNC machine, which is CNC refers to computer numerical control, um, automated control of, of marking tools by means of a computer. So this is all computer derived. Um, another unusual medium is string. Um, vertical and parallel lines made up of rayon thread, multicolored rayon thread. And when you get up close to here, you can see that she's pierced along the top and the bottom to make her aperture, no, her apparatus for the threads. Um, I think one of the things you think about when you look at something like this is how, how long did that take her? And that's a part of what she's very interested in, is, is that this work records the process of its making. That you can think about the artist poking the hole through, drawing the thread through, going one to the next, making decisions about which colors to put together. Uh, she also works, and she's very well known for working three-dimensionally. So she'll take a corner of a room and use threads to create sort of these very ethereal sculptures. So it's not just flat, it also goes out into, into space. She used to be in Kansas City and I think she's moved since then to the New York City area. Uh, something else I like about this piece is that you stand here, you get one vision of it. It's very light and sense of light through. And then as you walk around and look at it from either side, the colors and the composition tightens, tightens and changes and the colors become more dense. Um, the sense of light is less. 
So it has, I like that about it a lot. As you go from side to side. So string as a drawing medium. If we're talking about lines on a two-dimensional surface, this is one way of doing it. Um, then we have these two Ed Ruscha drawings. These are among the jewels of a, the, our permanent collection. These are um, from the early 1970s, and their example, Ed Ruscha is a, a well-known artist throughout the country and internationally for his compositions that often have to do with language. There's often a word or a phrase that he'll um, either paint or draw and with kind of backgrounds that don't quite help the meaning of the painting. It's m mostly about these words that become mysterious because they're isolated. In this case, uh, these are from his ribbon, ribbon word drawings. It's as if you've taken a stiff piece of ribbon and created the letters that spell out papers on the top or Vaseline on the bottom. And no real meaning, it's, they become kind of mysterious in this very atmospheric space. And that's why he likes the, did I say that these are gunpowder drawings? He likes using gunpowder because um, he likes the color, but it also allows him to get this very shaded, um, foggy, misty space. He says it's much more forgiving than graphite, that if there's a mistake, it's easier to clean up. And, um, and then he adds pastel, here yellow, and here maybe a little bit pink to add to it. So these are prime examples of his drawings from a prime period of his career. So we're really, these are great works to have. They're normally in my office. They're what? They're, they're normally in my office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The, this group, the five works over here are, have come in the past year. You might remember in the Rule of Three show, in, in this very spot, there were three kind of lumpy, gloppy, humanoid forms, black and white. And they're by this artist, Arnie Nadler. Um, in the introduction on the wall outside, I talk about some of the purposes of drawing. It can be used by artists to make quick notations or to rem try to remember something. It can be used as a preparatory study for things in other media. It can be a way of experimenting and working ideas out before working in another, on another composition. Or drawings can be fully finished um, compositions on their own, in their own right. They can be intimate. They can be awe-inspiring. They can be quickly done. They can be totally laborious. Um, there, it, there's a lot of, of uh, room for them to go. And so these three by Arnie Nadler are kind of sketches for those three-dimensional works in ceramic. You can see how they're related to it. And um, another, uh, another benefit of drawing is that it sort of gives you, especially drawings like this where you can really see the artist's hand at work, it gives you a sense of their working methodologies and how, how they come to their ideas so that even handling ink on paper, you get the sense of, by building up layers upon layers, you get the sense of how they're going to be three-dimensional later on, how he wants things to feel very elastic, um, and, tr and how he tries to represent in clay the plasticity that he's able to get in ink on paper. So these are all things that help him, I think, going on to his ceramic. Um, we might say that with David Maxim, these came last year, um, these are part of his series devoted to, what are these called? Tornadoes. And there's really the sense of the rough sketch here of being out in nature and trying to capture something. He himself does not go out in nature. He goes to um, storm chasers websites. So he gets a sense of, of the ferocity and the uh, unpredictability of the tornado but you can see the artist quickly gritting out the paper to give it a sense of structure and then going in roughly with watercolor, charcoal, um, pastel, and pencil to get across the power of and the unpredictability of natural phenomenon. Yes. Storm chaser 
websites? Like websites, you know, when they, they post pick, they post movies. If you went to the storm site. No, like the storm chasers, they'll they'll show their pictures from their car. Widely available, artists use metal, the fine metal wire as a drawing medium. It could be gold, copper, lead, um, and silver. And this is an example of silver point, which um, is a technique that goes back to the Middle Ages. We know about it from a lot of drawings from the Renaissance. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci was a master of silver point. And here we have Carol Prusa with the silver point entitled, What Connects Us Now? Um, she has taken a piece of, I think, birch plywood, gessoed it, and then compiled these various fields of, of imagery. Um, this very concrete flower form that's a little anthropomorphized. Um, and then this more atmospheric kind of haze onto which she's placed dots of sulfur, yellow sulfur. Uh, the thing about silver point is anybody who has silver or silver plate, it tarnishes and grows darker over time. So this painting or this drawing is changing constantly because as time goes on, the silver will become warmer and warmer um, and change. Right. So kind of hard. So she, she scratched into the surface? Or? I don't think you have to scratch. I think it's, there's no sense of incision. It's very surface. So she applies. And there's, there is some graphite in here too, so it's. Is there paper not put on or is that just gesso? No, I think it's just the gesso backing. There's no paper. And then there is white too. See those little white dots? Yeah. Right. Of highlight. Is silver point? Is and there's paint on here too, so that, that yeah, white might just be going back in paint. Okay, you, it's like you can see the hatch mark. Okay. Yeah, this piece is always kind of, it tricked me. It's kind of, I guess the process is a little mystical mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. I, you probably can see an example of how to do it online. I think it's just a, like a, a, a circle of wire and you just draw with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. I haven't done it, but. Um, then this corner is the pastel corner, and these are, you know, we can talk about drawings being preparatory and working towards other things, but they can also be finished objects in their own right. And this corner is, are examples of, ob of artists who don't think as, who think of drawing as their main occupation and, and the, what they do. These are all pastels. Nora Othic, who many of you may know, she's um, a leading artist in our area. She typically does livestock, um, but this we had a show, a summer show for her a few years back, and Dr. Dom was still alive, and he opted for these two pieces over the livestock. Um, <laughs> as was as was his way. <laughs> Excuse me. Residence at the fairgrounds? Yeah, I think Alan has had her out at the, the fairground. Um, anyway, you know, th these are, it, you know, in a hundred years, people will look at these and think, oh my God, look at the detail and, it, and how much does it tell us about this point in time? Um, because she captures certainly slices of life in taverns and pool halls with regular people out having fun, smoking cigarettes, drinking beer. Um, and she brings, you know, she has a great sense of form and design and, and every time we look at a steer, we, can, we feel like it's right there. And I think it's the same thing with these people. Although she claim, you know, she lives in the middle of nowhere. I went to her studio once and, oh, I thought I was going to have lunch on the way back and all this other stuff. And I, got, and I think it was two and a half hours north. I have no idea where it was. But there was nothing. There was no lunch. There wasn't even a gas station. And she said that when she does people, she only uses herself and her husband as models because there's nobody else around. 
So when you look at these people, it's like a family reunion. You know, they all are... As, well, they have kind of similar body types and... <laughs> yeah. Yes, look at these three. <laughs> um, so totally finished works. Um, charming. Picaresque, I think, is a word we might use. Um, little slices of everyday life. Uh, Sherry Leedy, who many of you know as a gallerist in uh, Kansas City, she also had a show here a few years back you know, that we acquired from here, uh, and we acquired this piece from that show. She has a show up right now at her gallery of more recent drawings by herself and um, new sculptural pieces by Giuliana Frio is there right now. No, that hasn't been out in a while. It's sort of an academic exercise in a way, setting up a still life, building it up in this, in this very um, pitched forward type of way, and then using all this colored paper to, and colored glass to create um, a carefully composed composition. Color, shadow, the reflections of glass, these are all important things for her. Um, and a completely finished composition. And then this one, I was happy to, I've had this out periodically. This is um, Yvonne Rosser, and I think she um, lives in Warrensburg. I've been looking at this for years as two separate compositions, but um, putting it up this time, I had a different reading of it, and it's, and, and it's a reading, it's not fact. Um, th this is called Ickley Woodland 1 and 2. So, and they're, they've always been installed this way, hung over each other. So I always thought it was two separate images and we were looking at kind of standing on high ground and looking down into a pond or a body of water. So you're standing here on the ridge and you're looking down at water. But this last time, I felt like I was standing on a ridge looking down at water. There's a, sh a far shoreline here and it kind of continues up to this point and then we go from water and then now we're looking up at sky. It's no longer water. So that I was, I started to look at them as a uh, unified composition. It doesn't exact, you know, there's not continuity, but I, I like that idea of looking at it as one and you're going down and then you're going up. Is that how she meant it to be? I don't know. I don't, she meant, I think she meant them to hang like this because they always have. I wasn't here when this was acquired. I kind of feel like those are clouds. Both. I don't even. I never even thought of water. That's interesting. You know that this is part of a, a land wedge. Yeah, that's how I see. Yeah. Maybe water below, like clouds. Yeah, above. Yeah. So I was happy with. I had had a little change. <laughs> Um, any questions or comments for this room?